Hello Gophers and welcome to our new video where we'll be learning about how to create a gRPC client. Now creating a gRPC client is just a simple three-step process. Before we start creating a gRPC client, we just need a gRPC server to connect to. If you want to create your own gRPC server and you don't have knowledge how to create that server, don't worry. We have a video that I have linked on the i icon on the top right corner of this video. Go ahead and watch that video to create your own gRPC server. Now to create a gRPC client that is often referred to as gRPC stub, you just need a connection to your existing gRPC server that is also referred to as gRPC channel. Now to create this gRPC channel, you just have to call the gRPC.dial method passing in the URL and the port number of the server where your gRPC server is executing and followed by the optional dial parameters or dial options which would contain option like how would you like to authenticate the request from the client to server. Right now for this series we will be having with no security but yeah but future you can implement security and use that dial options. After you have the connection with you, the second step is creating the actual stub. Now, creating to create the actual stub, you just need to call in the create new client of the service that you have already created using the protocol puff. So the service that uh, service method that is available to you would be in the naming convention by name, the service name that you have given in the protocol puff file followed by a client keyword. So over here on the client side, we would call this method by passing in the connection that, or the channel that we have obtained from the first step. The third and the final step is calling the gRPC methods using the stub that we have obtained from the second step. Now that was the basic introduction of these steps. Now let's go to the code and understand in depth how you can use all these three steps to create a gRPC client. So now let's start by understanding all the three steps in detail and on the code level. So the first step is creating a connection to an existing gRPC server. So we have this code that helps you in connecting to an existing gRPC server. This code consists of the main function that is grpc.dial which takes in the URL of the grpc server and an option array uh, slice practically. So this option options would contain all the options that you want to have the primarily like the, your authentication for your grpc server and client. But for now we have used an insecure so that you don't have to worry about security right now. So if the connection creation is success, we'll have a defer which will close the connection. Now, then there, there is second step in which you create a gRPC uh, client to the service that is available or registered on the gRPC server. So if you remember, we had two services that we have registered on the gRPC server. One was for login service and one was for validate token service. So we have methods to create client for those services namely new the service name and client if you see new validate token that service that is the service name and the client so these these method takes in the connection object and create the connection to the particular service available on the grpc server so right now firstly we'll be understanding how to use one service and then we'll move forward to using both the service simultaneously so if you remember we had four different type of rpc method one was simple rpc server streaming client streaming and a bi-directional streaming so for grpc simple rpc method specifically it is just like a trade-off between the service and the client so it says that client would send in some data which is expected by the server server would do the manipulation on anything that it has to do on the data that is provided and then server would provide a response back so it's it's a very simple trade-off where it's it's already known that yeah we'll be sending this data we receive this data at that same particular instance and until unless we don't receive the data we'll keep waiting on the function execution we don't execute anything apart from that 
until we receive the response from the server. So over here, what we do is using the login client, we call the login simple RPC method that we that we have already created. We send in the data that is expected by the client, uh, sorry, by the server, and we receive a response. In case we receive an error, we would have to check what error it is. If it is some error from the server, which was returned from the server, specifically handled exception, we have to provide uh, similar feedback to the client. Otherwise, if that is success, we would we would have the token right now for our use case. So let's run this code and let's see. Now, if you see what I've got is a response which contains the token for me. So this is how we, we have sent a login credential and we receive a login response. Now let's understand how we can do a server stream, how we can use a server stream uh, object. So in server stream, if you remember from the RPC method, so it's like we are sending a object at a time but we expect smaller chunk of data and in a continuous fashion from the server side. So server keeps streaming out the data uh, constantly. So what I've done is I've created a list of login credentials and I've sent those in one go to the server. So we have the login server stream RPC and I've sent this login details which contains the list of login credentials for us right now and we are receiving a stream from that method. Now the stream is important because we'll be calling out the stream.receive method until unless it says an error which is equal to end of file. So end of file as an error means server is finished sending data. So this is a special case that you, you have to definitely handle so that you your code knows that your yeah, server is done sending the data now. now I can do whatever I want to do on the data that I've received in smaller chunks. If the error is not equal to end of file, then that definitely server is trying to indicate us something else. So we'll handle that. Otherwise, we are receiving a success response data. Right now in our case, it's, it's login response. So login response for each credential separately. So what I've done is I've maintained an I variable for iteration for this for loop so that I know that how how many uh, data I have received from the server. Now let's clear this, uncomment this server streaming method and comment the symbol streaming. And now let's run this. Now if you see I've got iteration one and iteration two, where it says it has received data that says that these were the login credential that were sent and this is the token for that. Again, for the second data that I have received, it says that this is the login credential that was for mark and the token is this thing. So this is how we can do a server stream. Now let's come to a client streaming where we would continuously keep sending data to server and once we are done sending we'll send a signal to server that we are done sending and then we'll expect a response from the server side so what i've done is we have created a list of login credentials definitely and we have connected to the client uh, to the login client where it is client streaming method and what it gives us is a stream now it says that use the stream to send in the data to me keep sending the data and when you finish sending give me a signal that i'm finished sending then on the same stream i will send you the data uh, response back so what i have done is uh, we have created the stream now on the stream we keep we run the for loop that on the list of credential and we keep sending those data to the server one by one so this is stream dot send each credential is being sent and once we are done sending, we send in a signal that close and receive. That means close the sending and we want to receive the data from you now. So that means server has got the signal that yes, they have finished sending. Now it's time for me to respond. So this is the response that we get from the server. 
and this is the error in case there is any. Now let's run the client RPC. Comment out the server PC. Clear and go. So if you see, we have got all the data of both the credentials that we have sent in one single response. Where if you see, this is the first credentials that we send and this is the token for the credential. Then this is the second login credentials that we send for Mark and we received a token for him as well. So this is client streaming. This is normally done when you have a large file set or large data set that have, that client has uploaded. And you'll, you'll have to send that in a smaller chunks to server and then signal out that yes, I have finished. Now you do the complete processing and send me the response. I'll be waiting. So this is when the client streaming is mainly used. Now let's go to a bi-directional streaming. So bi-directional streaming is like the client is also sending the data and the server is also sending the data simultaneously. But there is no no connection between that uh, so client is sending one data and we receive the response for the first data first. No, there can be scenarios where you have sent 10 data all together from the client side and you just receive a response for the first data or maybe for the second data. It can be anything because this is completely asynchronous. So let's see how we can do it. So in bi-directional stream, what we do is we call out the client method, which is for the bi-directional streaming. So if you remember the validate service, so validate was bi-directional streaming, where it's expecting a stream and it responses with a stream. So this is a stream. Now we have created a go routine function which will be receiving data from the stream continuously. And if it receive end of file, that means go routine is done and we can exit from the go routine at least. Right now we, we just have this go routine and we want to exit from the main function as well. So what we are doing is we are closing the channel and this channel helps us in waiting on the function so that we don't exit out from the function main. So this is a go routine which keeps receiving the data and over here we are sending if you see stream dot send and we are we are continuously sending the login credentials or token for this method it is validated so we are keep sending the token to the server so this is one time i have sent and i have taken a break of two seconds and then we have sent again same token but it's an invalid token because i have added some random string in front of that now let's go ahead and try to execute this. Now what I've done for this method uh, that is like I've called the first the simple RPC which receives in the login response and I use that same login response to access the token and send it in the bidirectional stream. So we need to uncomment the simple RPC as well so that we have some token. Now if you see, uh, we call the simple RPC just to have a token in place so that we can use the validate method on the same token. So I use this token for the first time and send the exact same token to the server to get it validated. So it says that it says that the server says that the token is valid and contains claim which has client ID as one and username as Steve. Now, if you remember, the simple RPC method generated token for Steve. If you remember this, so it generated token for Steve. And this for second time in the bidirectional stream, so what we have done is we have corrupted the token and then we have sent. So if you see over here, we get as valid as false and claims everything is null. So nothing in the claims we get. So this is how we can call the bi-directional stream. So that's all on how to create a gRPC client. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, hope this was of some help to you guys. So thank you for watching this video. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel and also press the bell icon so that you don't miss on any notification on any new videos that we put across for this series or we create new series for some kind of new topics. 
we would also like to hear from you guys in case you have some suggestions on how we can improve or what what topics do you want uh, us to cover for you guys that could help you in improving uh, somehow